What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisor.com, bringing home the bacon. NFL Thursday Night Football Showdown. We are into week two already. Week one is in the past. Week two is here. But I do want to know, down below, let me know. Did you guys do well in week one? Let us know how you did, either season-long or NFL DFS for daily fantasy, FanDuel, DraftKings, whichever website you play on. Let us know how you did. So, we are back. If you don't know who we are, fantasyteamadvisors.com is the website. You can check it out right here. We have a ton of information. We go into detail with DFS currently, MLB, NFL, um, NASCAR, PGA, and MMA. We've also got NBA once that comes back. So we are full swing. We're really excited about NFL, and we know you guys are ready to dive into Thursday Night Football. Now, we had the Monday Night Football breakdown. Uh, it was, you know, CMC was a late scratch. Jawan Jennings was one of our plays that we liked as a cheap option. There were just other plays that we really liked that we wanted to talk about. And we got through it. Threw us for a loop for him being out about an hour before uh, first uh, the kickoff. So that was a little different. But, I mean, Jordan Mason was a great option. So hopefully you guys did well. So uh, we're going to break down the, the showdown. Uh, we're going to look at the game. We got Buffalo at Miami. Um, there was weather concern a couple of days ago. It looks like it is good now. Uh, hopefully, you didn't got you know you're ready to go. So we're gonna look at it. Depending on when you watch this video, the opening line was over 49 and a half. It is now up to 50 and a half, and currently it is uh, the let's see the Dolphins are a one point favorite as of right now. Uh, depending on the book you get on get them on. So if we're on DraftKings, Dolphins are now a, a two-point favorite. And we'll just kind of see how it goes throughout. There are, you know, injuries, a chain. Um, you've got Mostert also both banged up. And, you know, Mostert really let a lot of people down in week one. So we are here to look at everything. So we're going to take a look and see what we've got for um, all of the plays. We have a breakdown of what goes into what category, and we are going to talk about that real quick. But if you guys like this video, hit that like button, guys. Subscribe if you have not. We are 80 subscribers away from 10,000, and I'm going to do something good for you. If we can get to 10,000 subscribers to this YouTube page before Thursday kickoff, I'm going to give away a lifetime pass to one person who are, is a subscriber to the YouTube page. So that is a $500 value right there. Also, first come, first serve to email me, dfshelp1 at gmail.com. That's dfshelp, the number one at gmail.com. We have 10 spots open for a yearly pass, normally $199 for fantasyteamadvisors.com. We are going to give it to you for 50 bucks if you email me right now. So first come, first serve. And as always, these videos are sponsored by outlier.bet. You can check all of them out. The matchups are there, the injuries, the insights, everything is there. And if you guys are, if you've been with us for a while, so not last year, we took a break from it last year. People didn't seem to like it, but now they really want it back. And we are going to do that. We have our NFL matchup tool coming back. And we're, we're current, depending on when you watch this video, it might be done. But we are bringing it back. It'll be on the website for week two. What it is, is this is the opposing defense. These are the, the passing allowed to quarterbacks, the rushing allowed to quarterbacks, and the fantasy points per game allowed to quarterbacks. So you can see Arizona Cardinals averaged 17.9 fantasy points to the opposing quarter, uh, quarterback last week, which was Josh Allen. You can go all the way through that. You can check out running backs, which we are building onto this right now. Um, same thing. So if there are certain things you want to see in this matchup tool, let us know. But this is going to be part of how we break down each and every game here for the main slate come uh, Sunday. So we're, that video will be out there this weekend. There's a lot of videos. Make sure you check out everything. We have uh, rankings out there as well. So we are going to dig in to this game right now. So just to preface this by saying this is data from 2023 to current. So right now, 84% of the top nuts lineup that took the GPP down or took the showdown down contained at least one quarterback. You've got to get that in there. And we've talked about that before. 6% of the lineup used the entire $50,000 salary. So do not think you have to use all $50,000. That's a big misconception a lot of people don't know. 
16% of the players have had a $200 player in there. So if, if you are 16% of the lineups, so two to $300. So you would look in here and you would just, if there's ones that jump out to you, like maybe a KJ Hamler, if he gets in there, um, he's the practice squad, but maybe he gets put, picked up. Um, you've got other ones at $300 value or flex, sorry, flex or $200 value. You wouldn't use them in the uh, captain spot. So depending on if people are ruled out, we could find some value here. Like Alec Ingold could always steal a, uh, a vulture, a touchdown. It, it didn't happen week one. He had two attempts for eight yards. So in one target. So had he caught that, you know, his salary was very cheap. So this is just one thing to look at. You can always look at, uh, you know, depending on who's in there. So between now and when the kickoff is, make sure to see if anyone's been elevated from the practice squad. You know, you got cheaper options like Braxton Berrios, um, two targets in week one, didn't do anything with that game. So there are very cheap options that you can find. Uh, again, no, 16% of the lineups had a $200 player. If we go further down, 80% of the lineups had a $4,000 or less player in it. So that is basically Bill's defense and down, um, which you could find John U. Smith, Dawson Knox, Jeff Wilson Jr. would be a tremendous play who has a great offensive uh, going up against the defense here. If, in fact, uh, Devin and um, Mostert are out in this game. So they did get hurt. They were banged up. He had five attempts for 26 yards, no catches, but 2.6 fantasy points. And we look at him, he's 2,400. So there are just different ways to go about it. You always want to see your kicker. I mean, as we saw Jake Moody yesterday, abs or on Monday, absolutely murdered it. So uh, average lineup has a salary of 47584 So you do not, again, you do not need to use all 50000 on DraftKings. That being said, people have asked us. We love, you know, we love to stack. Baseball, we stack. Football, depending on what we do. Sometimes we stack with the pass catchers and stuff like that. So... Looking at this overall, a three to three, uh, 36 percent, three of three stack. So three on each side, 36 percent of the time. That's how what takes it down. So you've got to look at the game script. You got to see how the lines have moved from when they come out on Tuesday to when they uh, when the game starts. So definitely watch how the line moves and you can kind of get in your mind how this game might play out. So on top of that. 4-2 stack is 44% of the time, and 5-1 stack is 21% of the time. So it appears the majority of the time you want a 4-2 stack. So you think, let's say, for instance, you think Miami is going to be up big early, kind of like what we saw Arizona with uh, on Sunday. And I had someone in a season-long league. He's got Josh Allen. Kept complaining. He's like, he's looking like crap, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you want Josh Allen to be playing from behind. So in theory, if you think Miami is going to be up big, you want Josh Allen and the Bills to be playing from behind because that's where you're going to get your points. Or vice versa, if you think the Bills are going to be up big, you want Tua, Tyreek, Waddle, whoever else, you want them playing from behind because your 4-2 stack could absolutely dominate there. And then a 5-1 stack is only 21% of the time. You know, if you make multiple lineups, maybe throw them in there, but, you know, that one might be a kicker or something like that. Just depends on if any value opens up. So here's the thing. We had an article and video about it last year, but we're bringing it back. Looking at between captain and flex, the captain spot, 39% of the time, the winning lineup had a wide receiver in it. So we look at that. Yes, Tyreek Hill is very expensive. They know what they're doing. Uh, maybe you go away from Hill at 17-4 and you go with Waddle at 12-9 and save a ton of money and you're still able to get Tyreek in there. That is a way to do it. So 39% of the time, the wide receiver was in the nuts spot for captain. 28% of the time was a running back. So as of like yesterday for Monday Night Football, CMC was the highest projected and most owned captain spot until the news broke, which makes sense. Um, again, though, you know, it is CMC's game or team. With Miami, if every one of them is healthy, it's kind of a crapshoot. So you might have to make multiple lineups with different running backs that you think might take it if they're all healthy for this game. QB was 17% of the time. And, you know, there's always that chance for, like, Baker Mayfield um, put up a ton of points in week one. If you played a showdown with him in it, he most likely was in the nuts lineup there. Anthony Richardson, same thing. Josh Allen, same thing. 
Tight end, only 7% of the time. Defense, 7% of the time. And kicker, 2% of the time. Now, it's a great recency bias. We know that Jake Moody killed it on Monday Night Football. So he was part of that 2%. He just had it, I believe, a 6 for 6, uh, like 30, 40, 50 yard, and then extra point. Like, he dominated. He single-handedly won me my season-long league week one. Um, Him and Dallas defense put up uh, 52 fantasy points for me. Um, And I won by like 20. Uh, He had Garrett Wilson. I had a kicker. And I was only up by like five because Puka let me down and got hurt. His knee blew. I thought it was over. Jake Moody said not so fast. So again, wide receivers 39% of the time in the captain spot. Running backs 28% of the time. uh, QBs 17% of the time. Tight ends 7% of the time. Defense and special teams, 7% of the time. And kickers, 2% of the time. So now that we have that out of the way, let's take a look at if it is possible and how to build some of these lineups out here because we've got some we want to look at, but we also want to build a lineup for you that makes sense. So we're going to follow the guidelines. We're going to look at these stacks, the uh, ones that make the most sense. We're going to make sure we've got everything in order. And we're going to rock and roll. So if you have not already checked out the website, go check out fantasyteamadvisors.com. NFL tab, you can go down and you can check out everything we have to offer. We're going to update this to volume report. It is now going to be updated weekly. So we, you know, week one, we only had a certain amount of stats. But you want to see defenses have changed this year. So how are the points allowed? How are the volume report? How is the red zone? That's all going to be updated by kickoff on Thursday. So give me a second. We'll get everything ready. And we will try to break this showdown slate down for you. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to build a few lineups where we're going to do the 4-2 stack. We're going to start with the uh, Bills first. So kind of get a couple of, a few different stacks with the Bills 4-2 stack. And then what we're going to do is we're going to flip it and go with the Dolphins 4-2 stack. Because again, optimal, that's, that's kind of what it is. So I would absolutely love to see or hear about your guys' lineups, what your thoughts are, breaking down this game in our Discord down below. So you can find all the information down below. You can find outlier.bet. You can find um, our core plays. You can find everything there. So if you guys are interested, prop bets as well, join it. It is completely free. So looking at this game, we know, we feel comfortable with like wide receivers 39% of the time they are in the captain spot. Josh Allen is a stud. I get that. So he will be in some of these captain spots, I do feel. So we can build that around that way for sure. But if you want to do a 4-2, I think we can still get Tyreek Hill in there. We can still get uh, Josh Allen. Uh, If you think they're going to stop Josh Allen just a little bit, again, get a kicker in there if you think uh, Tyler Bass is going to do anything. Um, Four or four extra points, two field goals made in week one we can draft him there so we're still averaging 5600 here so we're still hitting the wide receiver we're still going to get a four-man stack now believe coleman had a touchdown in week one he did not have a touchdown i'm thinking uh khalil shaker aren't i okay that's who i was thinking so you got kian coleman uh he's still there you got tyler bass um you know I think two is going to have a good game. He had a really good week one. He put up three, 338 yards with a touchdown. He's still running a little bit, still got what we needed. He's still got two fast guys, especially if off his running backs are all hurt. He's got to throw the ball a little bit. So 1,600 is what we've got left. I've got the crazy man. Again, the what was the percentage of someone under two, under fourth? 80% of the time, 40 or 4,000 or less. Mac Hollins at 1600. Now, again, you do not have to use the entire lineup. Let's say you don't believe Mac Hollins is going to do anything. Now, you know, he's barefoot weirdo, but two for two last week, 25 yards and had a touchdown. So, you know, things can happen. So let's say you don't use Mac Hollins and you go and you find a cheaper option. If something opens up like a KJ Hamler or, you know, something like that, that those are kind of plays that we can look at. So Mac Hollins makes a lot of sense for a lineup here in week one in week two so cheaper option it did use all of the salary again though uh six percent of the nuts have used the whole salary so not very much but a game like this if it is a high scoring game 50 plus it could in fact do that so 
This is just one of the lineups that features a Bills 4-2 stack. Okay, let's do a second one where we have a wide receiver in the captain spot. It is not Tyreek Hill. We are saving money. We're going Jalen Waddle. Now, if we look at what Jalen Waddle did in week one, game log 19.2, 5 of 5, 109 yards, uh, and ran a little bit. So, again, huge day for him as well. Um, just did not have that touchdown that Tyreek had. Tyreek had an 80-yard touchdown, obviously. So, Waddle in the, fl- in the captain spot. Um, we can still bring it back, and we can still go with Tyreek Hill. Okay, so the only thing we're not going to have here is Tua in there because he is expensive as well. But we're still going to have Josh Allen. So that leaves 4800 for three out of there. So Matt Collins, a cheap option again at 1600 which then allows us 6400 the rest of the way. I think we want to go back to the well with Key and Coleman. And now we're at 7100 You can do Shaker right there. You could do Curtis Samuel. Um, really didn't do much last week. I, you know, he's always a, he could, uh, you would save money. So if you put in, um, Samuel, your 1700 is what you're saving. But if we put in, um, Shaker, Khalil Shaker here, I think we could still do it. We're still leaving 900 on the table. We are not using the entire 50,000. It's a four, two stack with them. We still have the two top, uh, catching wide receivers on this Miami team. The only thing we are missing is a quarterback in Tua. So we're going to enter that one, and we are going to try another one, just depending on what we want to do. Um, Really depends. Let's say, for instance, we do want to go Josh Allen as the captain. So we're doing a quarterback as a captain, putting Tyreek Hill in there, and we want to take Tua throwing to Tyreek. Now, the rest of them, since this is a 4-2 Buffalo stack, we are going to look at how we're going to build around it. So what other Bills players are we going to use? So James Cook had a uh, 71 yards, three of three targets, 32 yards. So over 100 yards um, combined, did not have a touchdown, was the only one that really didn't have a touchdown for this team. Um, and I've got him on one of my teams, so that's why I'm a little salty. So we're averaging 1,700 there. So again, I think we go back to Mac Hollins, which brings us to 1,900 left. And honestly, MVS is one that's kind of intriguing. He's all the way down here at 1,800. Um, was not listed on the injury report. He The problem is he didn't see much. He had 19 yards in week one. But again, we've got to forget it. This is the difference between DFS, especially weekly uh, DFS. We got to forget about last week. It is a new game. It is a new game plan. Is different ways to go. So that is another lineup. Allen at the top. You got Hill, uh, Tua, Cook, Hollins, and MVS there. So we did three lineups with a 4-2 stack of Buffalo. Now what we want to do is three lineups with a 4-2 stack of Miami. Okay, so just kind of looking, starting off, I think this is going to be um, what you expect. But Tyreek Hill at the top is 17-4. You're going to have to find value. Um, and we have been able to do that. So we're going to continue this. So I still think Josh Allen needs to be in there regardless. But I think we can build a lineup with a 4-2 stack Miami with both of the quarterbacks in there. So what's crazy is I think we can get both of these. We can then do Mac Collins, who's cheap option, you know, psychopath outside, leaves 2000 Now we find some value here. So 2000 do we want to go Jalen Wright? No, we don't. We don't even know what's going to happen there. Braxton Berrios is one that I would look at. Now, um, he only had two targets, was unable to make an impact on the receiving game despite working as the number three wide receiver. He did return two punts for two yards. Berrios next chance to produce him in week two versus Buffalo. His opportunities could dip if Malik Washington managed to get healthy enough to make a debut. So that obviously we are waiting on some health issues. So Washington is probably up there in price. Or no. Oh, he's 200. So if there's somehow that Malik Washington makes his start here, $200 could be pretty sneaky. Um, they did not have practice on Monday. So that is definitely something. So, I mean, you put him in there, you're leaving 1800 on the table. It, that all dependent on if he gets in there and is healthy. So Washington is in there. If Washington is out, I do like a little bit of Braxton Berrios here working as wide receiver three here. So this is just one lineup. Again, the, you only play showdowns for tournaments. So that is the thought process when we build these lamps. There are not cash games when it comes to a showdown. Don't don't get it twisted. Now, one thing we didn't talk about was defenses. So let's go with a defense here. But first, we're not going to put him as the you know captain. 
I've seen it them win sometimes. It's not not going to happen a ton. We want to connect Tua with Hill. We want to also connect with Waddle. So we got the wide receiver one, wide receiver two. Now, looking at defenses, I think I'd go the uh, Dolphins defense. They didn't do much against Jacksonville. Um, but again, this is a showdown. That's kind of what we're looking at. So you add the defense in there. We're doing 63-50. So this is more of a one of those plays. Matt Collins, I just for whatever reason, Matt Collins is hitting all the numbers that I need him to hit right now. And that's kind of where I'm at. That leaves 11,100. We can add Allen in there. So Allen to Matt Collins. Then you still got Tua. You still got Hill. You got Waddle. And you got the Dolphins defense. So those are two of the four two stacks there. And now what I want to do, we've got Tua in the captain spot. We've got Hill in the captain spot. While Hill is going to be the most expensive at 17-4 like we've talked about, Jalen Waddle tickles my fancy here. We got Jalen Waddle there at 12-9. We've got Hill there at 11-6 in the flex. You've got both of the quarterbacks. Leaves 2,500. You know who it's coming in here. Matt Collins is coming in as a cheap option. Surprise, he's not up. And now we're at 3,500. We could go Dolphins defense. I'm not going to. You could go Dawson Knox, who in that game, 23 yards, uh, you know, we didn't know if it'd be Knox. Kincaid was neither really in that game. So you could go both. You could go those guys. If you think both of the wide uh, running backs are going to be hit hard, Jeff Wilson Jr. had 26 yards on five attempts once everyone was banged up. So it didn't do much, but he was there. But Jonu Smith could be a sneaky option. Only two targets, seven yards. Uh, but let's say they get down to the goal line and the running backs can't do it and everyone's double covering uh, Tyreek or Jalen. Jonu Smith could be a sneaky option here. A cheap $2,800 option leaves 700 on the table. Now, just for laughs and, or giggles, S and G's, just for S and G's, let's look at a kicker as the captain spot. So Bass, but if we think, uh, let's say we think they're going to be up and we need Jason Sanders to kick, we're going to look at Jason Sanders, three field goals attempted, two made, extra points, 10 points. Let's put him there. That allows a ton of things to go off for us. We can add Hill in there. We could add Josh Allen in there. We can add Tua in there as well. And that leaves 5,700 on both sides. So to be honest, we could go Jalen Waddle. That leaves 2,800. We can come down here to John New Smith. Maybe you think Dawson Knox brings it this game. We got Dawson Knox right there as well. This one I'm not 100% confident on because it's a kicker. But again, we saw Jake Moody yesterday uh, or on Monday, depending on when you watch this video, and he had a hell of a game. So there you have it. That is the uh, Thursday night football breakdown. Uh, just kind of how we build ones that make sense. If you have questions, uh, make sure you check out the NFL content here. Again, you can email me dfshelp1 at gmail.com. $50 for a yearly pass. The first 10 people that email us will and pay will secure the spots that are there. So that's what we've got. Any questions, comments, concerns, it might be easiest to hit us up on Discord because that's where we're able to answer it. We've got a ton of information over there. We build lineups with you guys. We give core plays. A lot of you say, this is what I'm building, and we help each other out as a great community. We have, I think, 300-plus members um, to the Discord, and we're trying to build them up as fast as possible. So any questions, you can ask down below. Uh, help out the community. Clicking on the ads helps out. And, uh, yeah, that's what I've got for Thursday Night Football Breakdown. Make sure you check out all of our other content on the site and on this YouTube page. We're going to break down a ton of things each and every week. The plan is videos for the slate breakdown using the um, matchup tool, the Thursday night football breakdown, the Sunday night football breakdown, and the Monday night football breakdown. And on top of that, the uh, rankings video. So give or take any time. It's only me on the website, me doing the videos, but five videos a week just for um, NFL and we still have MLB content going through until the end of the season which then will coincide with MLB is gone we will supplement that with NBA and we'll just keep the ball rolling so that's what I've got good luck today and as always let's bring up some bacon peace